This is a Raspberry Pi breakout box. I think the idea is you hook it up to the, the Pi through its uh, general purpose I.O. port and then you plug motors into the other side. And this is produced by a, a local chap and I think uh, they're intended mostly for school use which is why they're in a fairly rugged aluminium case. Uh, and originally for the, the end caps he was buying in these little surrounds which uh, come with the, uh, the extrusion and laser cutting out these brackets uh, which just fit over the front and the whole lot screws together. Unfortunately, whoever made these didn't put a great deal of thought into it because they've got a feed point on one side and they're trying to flow plastic around a very uh, thin section and try and get it to weld with itself on the opposite edge. And of course this weld line is proving to be a bit brittle. So as a result of that I got asked, can I make some fully moulded end caps which fit on? Uh, which I did, I get it up the right way. Uh, not quite as simple and easy as it might be because the plastic shrinks and obviously I've got to cut the mould slightly larger than necessary so that it, it fits on nice and tight. So uh, that got done last year but since then he's kind of branched out and he's now doing a version where he's got a, a breakout box for the breakout box which allows it to hook up to one of these BBC micro bits. So the idea is he will have a, a header in there that the micro bit fits in and a ribbon cable coming off here to go into uh, the uh, GPIO on his standard motor box and then the motors plug in as usual on the other side. So what I've got to do is modify the mould that made these to make a slightly larger slot to take the header socket for the BBC micro bit. And this is the mould that I put together last year for doing these. And it's a three part system. There's basically the uh, the front plate which probably needs a bit of a polish, feed point, and then there's a skirt which goes uh, around it like that to form, if I can find one, to form the housing. Uh, and then the central section is actually interchangeable. There's a couple of screws on the back holding it in. So that's the one for the motor side and then that's the replaceable insert for the header side. So what I've got to do is make a new one of these. Uh, just happen to have a piece of aluminium left over from doing the job last year. So I've got to machine that down and here's the sketch for it and it's relatively straightforward. It's just pocketing the main body section down one and a half millimeters going around the edges leaving the uh, upstanding pins for the screws and then this bit here needs to be extended slightly and obviously I can't do anything with this because it's been cut plus this is slightly offset which was necessary because of the PCB. So uh, we're going to have a go at machining that out quickly and then we'll throw it in the moulding machine and try and remember what material I was using because I think it was actually a blend of different materials. Uh, some uh, materials shrink more than others so I had to play around with uh, the blend that I was using just to get the right shrinkage so that it fitted. And I think he only wants probably about 100 of these maybe so it's a couple of hours of moulding but uh, to get there I think we're probably looking at a few hours of machining just to chop this down and uh, make a new insert and put a couple of threaded holes on the back. So we'll get that set up and give it a go. Okay, so we've got the plate on the machine. Uh, I think we'll be okay clamping it just here and then when we get to the end for the, the final uh, pocketing out we'll be able to swing a clamp in there and just come in on that slot where the header goes and that should hold it in place for the, the last bit. I might be able to swing some extra clamps in just for good measure. It doesn't need to be enormously accurate so um, this is roughly the centre of the bit that I'm going to be cutting out. We'll come down reference off there and do the pocket and that will probably take a little while so I'll go put the kettle on once I've got that going.
okay, a couple of hours later and the next stage is just to swing around this block here and just take that down slightly below the surface, about two millimetres and then likewise at the corners which are the uh, pins for the, uh, the mounting screws and they need to go down about 2.75 so already set that up, we'll spin that out a little bit more slowly and probably put a bit of oil on that as well because it's a fairly fragile bit Right, well that's mostly done, I've just got to chop it out now and what I'm going to try and do is come in here and come around and then out here and take all of that outer section off and I can swing in with some clamps to secure it on the back edge and then come across this front edge and free the plate. So uh, I think that's probably the safest way, so we'll do that next. That was the last cut, so with a bit of luck this will come out. With a little bit more luck it should be okay. There we go. Yeah, well that's not looking too bad. Yeah, might need a little bit of a deburr around the edges, but otherwise I think that's fine. Turn it over tomorrow and uh, drill those and progress with the moulding. <laughs>